If you're looking to do some fifth wheel couples camping, you might want to stay tuned. I think you're going to like what you see in this brand new floor plan. Hello and welcome back everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV with a new floor plan from the Cherokee Arctic Wolf Group. Uh, they've been a little quiet the last couple of years. We haven't seen them really kind of put out anything new and this year they're coming out swinging. Now I do apologize. It is crazy foggy this morning. They invited me down here to get an early sneak peek at this to get you some early access footage. And the, uh, the weather outside looks like the inside of my mind before the caffeine hits. It is foggy and not easily uh, seen through. Anyway, this is the new Arctic Wolf 23 MLE. And if that floor plan uh, model number sounds familiar, let's let's just rip off the Band-Aid. They flat out said, we really like the Cougar 23 MLE, and we'd like to take our stab at it. And it is certainly very similar in a lot of ways, but they still did it in their own little Arctic Wolf lens and even included a couple of things that uh, I have seen some other people asking for on similar floor plans. So, new for 24. What's in store for 24? Obviously, they fully facelifted the exterior, and I really like the visual cosmetic touch-ups around things like the slide fascia, but that's that's just that's just icing on the cake they have nearly doubled their fresh water capacity in these with a big old 81 gallon fresh tank now that they just really lacked on they really improved their solar package 100 watts now for the factory is a battery maintainer but you could wire it up to 400 watts pretty reliably and not need to change a single piece of wiring so you don't got to be ripping copper out of this sucker they also went away from a backup camera that had kind of so-so reviews and they went to a, a prep for a full observation camera suite that you could actually use like a security system if you choose to add one of those. Now we still have auto leveling. We still have an enclosed heated belly. Uh, they still only use the larger 15,000 BTU air conditioners. Everything that they were doing well, they've maintained. And then they've just kind of twisted the screws and tweaked some things around and improved some other things. Now, this floor plan right here, coming in about 30 feet, only about 7,200 pounds dry weight, sounds very, very half ton towable. But they gave this thing a huge cargo capacity, which is something a lot of fifth wheels really seem to be lacking. So if you do want to tow small and pack heavy, you might want to stay tuned. I think you're going to like what you find out of this one. So when you go through these, uh, you know, videos, it's it's kind of hard to remember sometimes, especially if you don't have like a big time frame of reference, that each RV kind of, uh, each company has a little bit different place. And it's not exactly clear, like, uh, sometimes people ask you, what's the pecking order? Well, there's, there's, it's, there's really not, you know, they, they overlap like a Venn diagram pretty heavily. This does, this is a, a camper that I call punching above its weight class. It does a lot of things. It's something that's a little bit lighter and a little bit more focused on budget stuff. You don't always expect to do. Now there's some of the big high dollar stuff that it doesn't do, but overall I'm, pretty happy with what I see. And I think that, yeah, you can criticize them for saying they just kind of copied somebody else's floor plan, but I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> RVRD stands for rip off and duplicate, but you know, they at least tried to put their own little bit of a spin on it. Now I want to sit down at the sofa over here. By default, you may have noticed that was a trifold hide a bed. Um, part of the reason they standardize that is because it is a couple bucks cheaper than a theater seat. But here's the good news. It's a hidden option, but I, I just exposed it. You can option a theater seat into this. Now, I'm sitting all the way to the left on the sofa. It's not exactly a direct-facing entertainment, but it is a little bit of a shorter floor plan, so uh, it does have a little bit of a misalignment there. Notice, too, we had all those nice windows wrapping around the campsite of the RV, and when you're sat down, the windows make a lot of sense. Also... You have some very social seating arrangements here, and we're going to see in road mode, because the uh, dinette is located in the main floor body of the RV, that means that you have, I'm going to call this thing A-plus travel stop access, and you'll see what I mean. I would say, though, I would immediately get rid of those knee knocker dinette leg posts, but that's just me. Now, one thing I will tell you, uh, it's true over in the kitchen as well, you have to look under some overhead cabinets to see uh, uh, the power outlets at times. So kind of keep that little factoid in mind right there. I do like the fact they have that big ceiling fan up top and in the bathroom, you'll see that they have the big fajita Friday fume fight and fart fan. They don't use the little dollar store four inch variety. Again, there's little things like that that you just wouldn't necessarily uh, expect. Now, I think most people would generally prefer a one level countertop based on the comments I've seen in the past. So you might ask, why don't they do that? And the answer is because the suppliers can't make 
one piece counter that big and long. They have to have a seam in it somewhere. So if they're going to have a seam, they have a choice to either just put a, a, a bead of silicone sealant down the middle of what looks like a cracked countertop, or they can do something like a level exchange that looks a little bit more intentional. I'm kind of okay with what they did. I think it also acts like an interesting sort of uh, serving station right here where you're doing your main prep work over on the rear wall of the rear kitchen. And then you're kind of serving stuff over there on the left, whether it's, you know, your nachos for the game day bucket go boom or what the case might be. Now, something you won't see in this RV are uh, floor heat vents. Um, this model, you may notice, it is a, a little bit of a toe kicker slide. Technically, it's a crack a toe <laughs> But... You're not really like standing in front of the sink or the stove here. So I'm going to give it a pass. I'm going to say that this is a, a, a very well executed carpetless floor plan right here. Now, again, they have done a little bit of cosmetic updating on their slide fascia. And it looks, if I'm just going to put this bluntly, it looks not so cheap like it did last year. Like I, I know that Arctic Wolf has always been built with a, a specific price point in mind and a weight target. But sometimes they really look like that. And... Um, I think that there's ways that you can make an RV look better without actually making it, you know, cost a whole lot more. Um, the the fireplace over there, that is something that in similar floor plans from other builders, I've heard people asking for, and I haven't really seen a lot of builders uh, solve for that yet. And one of the things that I wondered is if you couldn't repurpose some of that forward uh, wall right there that we're looking at to include a fireplace, and they did. I'm kind of cool with that. That's going to provide some extra heat without burning up your propane. Really handy in spring uh, and fall camping. Now, that, that weird black bar inside that pocket right there, that is a mount for a specific, uh, I think it's called drive or driven portable Bluetooth speaker that naturally the RV doesn't come with. See, the thing is, there's things like that or the outside camera prep mounts that you're going to see in this RV that suppliers have found out if they basically give a manufacturer the um the the mount well then people will be more inclined to go buy their cameras or their speakers and naturally they charge a little bit more for their specific thing because some folks are of the impression that that's the only bluetooth speaker in town that's going to work for them you know it's basically some some fancy marketing now our entry door is uh shade prepped doesn't actually include the shade but that is like a i don't know 40 to 50 dollar fix that literally requires no screwdrivers you don't need a tech to do it there's literally just four little plastic tabs that you flip in there now i have something i would like to see changed on this and i think they could actually apply to, to a lot of their different models the tv is mounted up a little bit high but if you look back here it is actually on a, uh, a double jointed swing arm mount. What I would like to see is instead of mounting that horizontally, which they did so you could get to the storage behind it, I would like to see them mount that vertically. So the TV actually could drop down a little bit lower, almost like a reverse manual televator, if that makes any sense. To, I, I feel like that's an idea that a lot of people would be kind of keen on, but I haven't really seen any builders do yet. Speaking of storage, looking behind there, you can see how that TV does the twist and shout pivot around. The dinette can fold into a sleeper, and again, full drawers below the dinette in a more budget series camper. A lot of manufacturers, you're lucky if they even give you doors, even in big fifth wheels. So that was something I was really happy to see. Um, triple drawer space in that little serving station, uh, almost like room for two uh, waste baskets, but big pots and pans, not to mention all the overhead cabinetry and that big pantry. I stuffed my backpack in there since I'm traveling today, and I had room to spare. You could put a giant waste basket in the pantry if you're so inclined. Now, that is a 12-volt compressor fridge in the more 10 cubic foot variety. Big storage pocket above the fridge does not have a strut, which I... I didn't love, but it's low enough to the ground. I'm tall enough. It didn't bother me, but it would be a bit of a trick for my wife. But frankly, I don't know what fifth wheel does not require, at least like a two-step step stool. So I don't love it. I'm going to give it a little bit of a pass. I'm going to give it like a BB minus. But the fact is they did something with the space and they didn't waste it. I, I will take used storage over wasted potential storage every single day of the week. I think they did a, uh, a good job there. Something else, there's some simple, smart, thoughtful details in here. 
I like how in this kind of, uh, you know, pantry, I guess you could call it over here, almost like a vertical organizer pantry, they put the, the, the ha handles on the bottom so that once again, you know, these can be uh, a little bit high. And if you're a little more, we'll say gravity friendly, like, uh, m you know, Mrs. RV nerd, well, you're, uh, you're still going to need a step stool to get up there, but at least they did something with the space and they didn't really waste it, you know? Um, this open shelf over here I thought was a little bit interesting, but by including the household and the USB plugs, I think that it can make for a really handy charger station. And they've got two different varieties of United States Bs. They have Type A 2.0, designated by the little blue tongue in there, and they do have a Type C plug. So a lot of your more modern phones and devices, especially wireless chargers, need more juice, and these plugs can do that for you. This year, they've also, uh, in uh, included that centralized vacuum system. Uh, that The bottom right rectangle, I think, is the really cool one. That is what I call the electric dustpan. That's your little toe kick. You literally don't even need to, like, go buy yourself a set of pool hoses or anything. It just, uh, you just sweep right into it, and it's done. Got the Obi-Wan Kenobi, use the force, activate the, the lights on the uh, in-command, not in-command, um, actually, no, yeah, they call it total control, but it's LCI in-command, Lippard in-command. Um, tankless on demand water heater. Now it doesn't have a traditional stereo, which I'm okay with. You literally just Bluetooth to the RV sound system. So think of the RV speakers like a Bluetooth speaker that you'd use in the backyard, except it's giant and on wheels. And this little cigarette lighter plug, do they even call them that anymore? I, I don't know what they actually call these anymore. That is if you do add a full observation camera suite, you could use it like um, security uh, camera space inside. Now, did you notice uh, a little bit of light kicked on? There is a little motion light down there, but our big overhead lights in this, they uh, they, they are still, you know, switch operated, uh, as it were, so you can, you know, click those on and off as you need. Now, that is a big lipid storage, storage cabinet over there on the right, but on the left, a nice, deep linen cabinet, which is really, really awesome. A lot of RVs don't give you a whole lot of space there. Now, big sink kind of eats in the counter space a little bit, but I think there's still enough to put your toothbrushes and useful stuff like that around. Down below the, uh, the sink, though, the left side is like plumbing, but the right side is perfect for like a little wastebasket. And that's something that I'm constantly looking for in little RVs. And I actually think the bathroom is another area that's very unsung in this one. Like we have a porcelain foot flush stool and you see when you slide the door out of the way, I think it's centered up nicely. That's very fluffy friendly, plenty of room around it. Over here though, they could have just screwed a pair of drunken octopus coat hangers on the wall, having in their little fight club, but they churched it up a little bit. And it just looks good. And it just kind of ties the rooms together like the dude's rug, if you know what I'm talking about, man. It's just like your opinion, man. Anyway, I've yet to find a single person who does not prefer the big giant vent fan, which I think is funny that here at a more budget-sensitive camper, they're still knocking that out of the park. But there's like a lot of big high-dollar, quote, luxury fifth wheels that don't. And the headroom in this upper deck is so much better than so many fifth wheels that I've seen. And that's all well and good. But you may have noticed I was doing my chin-ups on the little, they added that little bar there, almost like a motorhome, so you can hang up some wet clothes. And look at this. RVs constantly come with these cheap plastic shower heads. On Amazon, the single number one shower head replacement is exactly what we're looking at right there, an oxygenic shower head. What it basically does, it has, you know, you can set it to like six, seven different, you know, spray arrangements, but it basically provides better pressure. You know, it, it just makes the water spray you a little bit harder because a lot of RVs are made for low PSI plumbing situations. That, I think, is very cool that they're including from the factory what is traditionally an aftermarket upgrade. Now, up here in the bedroom, this is something that crept in late last year and didn't get a lot of credit. The RV isn't, like, wired for a big fancy inverter package. But it does have this single point inverted outlet right there. So if you are on battery power, you can flick that sucker on and like run a standing fan, uh, maybe like a CPAP machine or something. There's some USB plugs on it as well. There's still, as a result, household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed. And I, I love all the little radius work they're doing. They don't have the little like jab you in the shoulder kind of situations here. Again, we're still carpetless even here in the upper deck. And notice how they don't have an ankle breaker step of death around this 60 by 80 true queen bed right here. What is nice though, I don't know if you caught this because I've been kind of, I've been super focused in right now. Last year, they just had a shelf above the bed. I almost forgot about that. They enclosed 
the cabinetry right there, which I was really glad to see uh, personally. But kind of like a, you know, we saw above the refrigerator, it's, it's we'll say, automatic gravity closing. First, though, looking under the bed, easy lift, great storage on there, but they kind of redesigned that, too. So it's not quite a dresser, but it sort of gives you, like, those um, sort of shoe pockets, you know, as it were. Not to mention um, the, the closet across from the bed below that has some excellent like shoe storage space over there and that will comprise your hanging storage because when you look around the bed you don't really see hanging storage space but it absolutely has it and they accomplish that without a wardrobe slide so they saved weight and they saved additional seal and potential leak points i'm sure you've estimated that is tv prepped uh up in that corner right there right above us here though you see that power junction box these are all 50 amp service. They are all second air capable. So it is possible that we have one of these in stock at some of our stores with a second air, but all of them are second air capable, whether it's installed from the factory or not. So kind of keep that in mind. If it's already prepped and ready, that is something we can do for you. Now, because the door is over on the hallway side with the bedroom and bathroom, uh, you know, taking a nap or taking a crap in transit, uh, very, very easy where this one nails it is the lower deck road mode because the slide it, it's like a full you know what two and a half i don't know it's a pretty deep slide but it doesn't come anywhere close to pinching things off it almost reminds me of like a motor home in uh you know functional road mode in transit you can still basically walk through the rig and generally is although there's no reason you should not be in this going down the road obviously you should only use it like at a stop but the fridge readily accessible we can get straight to the sink the drawers almost all the kitchen cabinetry and storage space super easy to walk through the only thing you really can't get to directly is the oven but i don't know how important that is for me in transit I personally consider this like an A-plus road mode kind of camper. And if you appreciate how we take the time to close the slides and show you all this stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let us know we're do doing a good job. By the way, one other quick note. It does have the, uh, this is going to get extreme real quick, the Smurf lights. And it has them not just in the living room, but also in the bedroom. And it's some, doesn't that look like a tanning bed all of a sudden? <laughs> Now, when you see something that says like model number 23, it starts to, to sound very half untoable. Then you see the empty weights only, what, it's less than 7,300 pounds. They found a way to make a very good familiar floor plan at less weight here, which is excellent. But this thing, they, they did not skimp on like the axles. Uh, they, they gave this thing a very hefty GVW, what, like over 4,000 pounds? Uh, that's more than I see on average out of giant luxury fifth wheels that, that state that they're, oh man, we're, we're ready for full timers. I tell you what, if you don't have at least 2,000 pounds of cargo capacity, I feel like it's, it's really hard to kind of market yourself toward full timers. Uh, and, and here's this little guy who's not even trying to act like they're, you know, hey, we're, we're building this thing for full timers, buddy. Yet they have just this monster cargo capacity. So kudos to them on that fact. Now you've got a decent uh, front passer right there. Again, it's a small fifth wheel, doesn't have a giant drop frame. So uh, I, I think that they did pretty good with what they had there. They've stuck with their black glass doors that have the full viewing window. The uh, kind of reflective window covering on this, um, I, I think it's better than no tint. But what's your preference in terms of like the mirror-like uh, reflectivity that we're looking at versus just like a, a hard black tint? Which one of those do you prefer to go with? Leave me a note. I'm kind of curious. I think I know the answer, but I don't want to jade the pole. Um, the awning here, nicely sized, guys. They did a really good job on that. Also, I noticed little subtle features like uh, the improvement on their grab handle. Last year, they had a fold-out grab handle, but it wasn't really like you had to really reach up there to grab the handle and somebody like my grandmother who's had multiple knee replacements she would have a really hard time grabbing the handle and getting her foot on the first step at the same time so they alleviated that and they just bulked up the handles across the board on their entire family of rvs now this is a uh, a four point electric auto uh leveling system so no real like you know cranking and yanking required on this thing and you know i i probably should have stated this sooner but i do think it's obvious if you've looked at the history of arctic wolf rvs they've been gray skinned since 2016 
and they just decided it was a change and it is crazy to me it feels like it has just really lightened modern and modernized and freshened things up a little bit i i like the uh the change to the the polar white exterior the other thing that's cool about that if you're camping in direct hot sunshine between the white skin and the pvc roof it will reflect more sunlight and absorb less solar radiation which just means in the summer sunshine the rv is just going to be cooler and more comfortable now in this industry there's all this nonsense about falsely inflated R bajillion R factors, you know. Like, I swear some of these RV manufacturing companies are trying to convince you that these things have like a space shuttle re-entry package. Well, they don't. And I really respect that Arctic Wolf is not pretending that they do. So kudos to them on that factor uh, right there. Now, there is, of course, a gas grill quick connect under that uh, stovetop. You saw the full ice maker out there, which is cool. Um, up top here, instead of the backup camera that some people liked it, some people didn't last year, they just went with a full prep for a Furion observation suite, including, you may have noticed, uh, a camera mounted above the door. So if you do decide to mount all four cameras, uh, you could actually uh, bring the monitor inside and use it almost like a security monitor system. Now, I, I like the fact that they're uh, prepping for a roof ladder, which is actually something they temporarily got rid of, which I thought was a major mistake that obviously they've corrected since. And I like the fact that they're doing a minimum 100 watt instead of 50 watt solar now. I'm not in love with the fact that those solar panels are literally right in front of the awning, or uh, the awning, the ladder. So if you do happen to climb up that ladder, you got to kind of almost, you know, weave around the solar panels to get actually up to the roof for your, your maintenance and your checkups and your upkeep. Considering how much roof space is up there, it just feels like those could have been moved a little bit. So maybe that's something that they'll pay attention to off this video. Um, it is a little bit tricky in a floor plane like this with a bathroom in front of the axles and a kitchen behind to cross plumb everything. You may notice this is a, a two-headed sewer monster. And again, I hope you appreciate how we go out of our way to kind of point things like that out. My goal always with these videos is uh, to, to help you find your second RV the first time. And sometimes you need to know what an RV doesn't do well to accomplish that. They've also swapped over that tankless on-demand water heater. It seems like that is really becoming the uh the dominant water heater more and more every year uh in the rv business now the underbelly of this it is enclosed it is forced air heated it is not some uh magic four seasons uh arctic camper which i've always thought was funny that it's called arctic wolf but not necessarily guaranteed for cold camping that being said here here's what i can tell you on this they just have never actually tested it it might be zero degree capable i don't know but because they haven't done the testing, I can't offer you a promise that even they're not offering. It just doesn't seem reasonable that way. And if somebody else does, I want you to get that in black and white writing. How can they prove and guarantee that for you? Because they're not going to have an answer. And I'd rather give you real information than make something up just to try to make a quick sale. Now, as I've very overtly stated, they're not the only 23 MLE, yeah, you know me, uh, in town. So if you'd like to kind of uh, be able to compare and contrast this floor plan uh, against some of the other things out there, check the links in the video description. Now, this is a brand new floor plan. Chances are at the time of this filming, we have not yet even had a chance to get some of these in stock. So if you're watching this right after this video comes out and we don't have one in stock, that just means that our website won't have anything to show you for pricing. That will heal and resolve over time. But in the meantime, you can contact any of our Arctic Wolf carrying stores. And we can certainly get you some figures on that. Uh, until next time, though. Let me know what you think about this one. Where they nail it, where they fail it. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I don't know. Anything in between. And take care. Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.